Welcome back into Alabama's Morning News. My name is John Mounts. I'm filling in for JT today, and I always enjoy talking with the folks from Young Voices because we're able to get the perspective of some people who are younger but still thoughtful. Because it's always been said if you're if you're um, if you're young and you're uh, and you're a Democrat, you know, it just means you have a big heart. But if you're old, you're still a Democrat. That means you don't have a brain. So Ethan Watson joins us now. I guess you've got both a heart and a brain because you are a young conservative with Young Voices. Welcome to the show. All right, thank you so much for having me. So an op-ed you recently penned was about Kamala Harris and how she's been trying to reach out to the younger demographics and trying to show, oh, look, I'm, I have the politics of joy and I'm such a happy person. I'm so uh, happy-go-lucky. First of all, first of all, for the young people out there, you know, 59 is not young. You know, she's actually not that young anyway. But second of all, she doesn't have any sort of – she doesn't seem to have anything in between her ears. Right, exactly. I mean, you know, does anyone really think Kamala knows what Brat Summer is or Charlie XCX? Obviously, some staffer closer to my age wrote that. Um, and, and, you know, frankly, I think my generation should be insulted by the pandering that's happening. Um, I think it's blatant with the twerking rappers and the sassy Twitter clapbacks. And, and, and what's worse about it, what's the worst part is, is that it, she's papering over a pretty radical um, agenda that I think is going to hurt a lot of Gen Zers. Um, and it's actually contrary to what we want, because I feel like if there's one thing my generation wants when I talk to my friends, you know, what do they think about politics? They just grumble and groan and say, no matter who's in party or who's in power, rather, nothing ever changes. And so they want to change from the status quo. So why aren't they paying better attention to Kamala? Because she's literally the establishment candidate, the arch establishment candidate, I would say. Uh, she was swapped in at the top of the ticket like Indiana Jones with that idol um, at the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark, except now there's no boulder chasing the Democrats. They're getting away with it. Um, she's copy pasting Joe Biden. Biden's policies over, and I think I'm calling on my generation um, to take a deeper look at Kamala and realize that she is the status quo that we are trying to um, push back on. Ethan, with your generation, what is the number one issue that everyone is concerned about? You know, when I talk to people my age, they talk about prices. They talk about the economy, right? Like, I'm a college kid. Well, most of my friends are in college or just starting their careers. And we notice that everything is more expensive these days. From a slice of pizza at our favorite late night spot um, to the price of a drink, everything has gone up um, noticeably. And it's hitting our wallets. And and also, you know, we're, we're at the age where we're starting to think about maybe buying a house in the next five years, thinking about starting a family, settling down. And in and, and this economy, you know, a lot of people I know, myself included sometimes, uh, we fear that we may never be able to do that. We never be able to afford that. And and that's something I really want to point out, too, because I think Kamala's economic plan is literally just Joe Biden 2.0. She's literally doubling down on some of his handouts, his overspending. Um, and, and she has some radical proposals like the unrealized capital gains tax, which would just crush the businesses to provide the goods and services that we use every day. And so I think, again, my generation, we need to turn on our inauthenticity sniffers and realize that we are being had here. So and in other words, Ethan, you're saying that your generation is concerned about what every generation is concerned about, our pocketbooks. And that seems to be the right. issue on which Kamala is the weakest. And that's the reason why she's in, she's determined to turn this into a discussion about abortion, because they believe young people really want to have a lot of abortions. I don't know that that is the winning issue for that party, but I guess that's what their polling indicates. Right. You know, I mean, I would say among conversations with my friends on that topic, you know, most people my age just kind of want to be left alone on social topics. You know, I tend more to be more socially conservative, but generally speaking, Gen Zers just kind of want the government to stay out of their, their private lives. And especially on the abortion issue, I, I don't understand why that's such a starter for Kamala Harris, because Kamala wants to implement a nationwide, you know, abortion amendment, enshrining that in our Constitution. Donald Trump sent that back to the states by overturning Roe v. Wade. So that's actually, to me, a more pro-freedom position on the issue, which is, I think, where Gen Z stands um, on those social issues. And really, Ethan, if you think about it, that's kind of the way the United States was designed. We have 50 states where you can choose where you want to live. And if you want to live in a state where things are very, very liberal, have at it. Go to California and, and abortion is legal all day long in California. If you want to be in a state where things are a little bit more, dare I say, you know, I don't know, thoughtful and, you know, reasonable, come to Alabama where we have a more reasonable approach to abortion. There's all sorts of different places. Places you can live and you can pick the situation you want to be in rather than the federal government passing one big rubber stamp law. This is how it works for the entire 50 states of the United States, because there are places where different laws make sense in different ways. 
Absolutely. And, you know, that's kind of the beauty of it, right? Like this diversity of opinion. And, you know, a lot of people kind of perceive the Democratic Party to be a place where, oh, well, it's just more tolerant. But really, I mean, there's not a lot of dissent that's tolerated within the Democratic Party. Political correctness, that whole regime is authoritarian, frankly, because if you slightly, uh, you know, vary from their puritanical uh, precepts on, you know, diversity or abortion or anything, if you even have a slightly different opinion on whether, um, you know, where we should be going on these topics, then you'll be tasked out like like a leopard basically it's it's kind of crazy it's almost a religion in and of itself it is um, I, so you, definitely yeah you hit it right there it, it liberalism is a religion and there are certain sacraments in the religion you know like say abortion and uh and uh free and free health care all these sa- sacraments you have to have if you're a member of this religion and if you're not then as you see you re- refer to the puritans although they're very much not puritans but in in much the same way you're talking about you know people being basically burned at the stake at least you know sometimes figuratively sometimes literally by by liberals who if you don't toe the line on every single thing that they believe in their list of things that they want so ethan thank you so much for joining us giving us a perspective it's nice to see that young people there are many young people who are just as 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 uh, clear thinking as the older folks thank you so much for having me on